Police brutality stories continue to trickle in and one story that really caught my attention luckily did not lead to the death of anyone. But it did feature a police officer who's now being investigated for using excessive force on a man who seemed to be listening to him and complying with all his demands. Now this story takes place in Pennsylvania. Apparently a neighbor recorded a Lancaster police officer using a stun gun on a 27 year old man named Sean Williams. Williams had been accused of using a baseball bat to assault someone, but the people interviewed at the scene said they never saw the bat and police never recovered one. Um, so in in other words, he didn't. Yeah, so look, those are the details we have of, of why the cops were there in the first place. But regardless of why the cops were there, what you're about to see should infuriate you because you're about to witness a man complying with the cops and then, you know, dealing with the kind of treatment that he did. Um, so it's difficult to watch, with, but with that said, take a look. That's it, bro. Oh, come on, bro. I'm listening. You're really gonna tase him? He was sitting down, though, bro. On your stomach. 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 Arms out like an airplane. Okay. Jesus. So, um,. I don't know if everyone can hear it clearly, but there's a female officer who's not on camera, and I keep hearing straight out and crossed. She, she's right. She she what said is she the guy said for? straight out, which he clearly meant now in hindsight. What he could have said, don't bend your knees. He meant put them out, and then she wanted them out and crossed. crossed. But he had them out, sort of just on the ground. Obviously, I would say unthreatening. Uh, and then he crossed them in, 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 in answer to her command. And, and that got, was when the other, when the male cop used the taser. But look, I, I'm gonna be honest, if I were in his situation, I wouldn't know exactly what the cops want. And honestly, I would also be terrified because you know one wrong move and you could lose your life from other videos that we've seen. So he didn't, look, I, I think the most important thing is he wasn't in any type of position that posed a threat to anyone. Um, his back was turned to that male cop. He was sitting on the curb. You can clearly see his arms. I, I feel like there was really no need to tase him at that point. But no, the, the police department is standing by. Of what course, there was no they need. Are. And of course, there was no need to tase him. Obviously, there's no need. To, I get it. They wanted his legs spread out. If your legs, I'm gonna, I'm guessing now, but I'm presume that if your legs are bent and your, uh, and the 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 bottoms of your feet are on the ground, you can spring up very quickly. If your legs are extended mm. out. Getting up is going to take a longer time. You were so that's why he was asking. But then you have to say, "Hey, don't bend your knees. Legs straight out. Yell it. Whatever." But he wanted to tase it. He the second time that he said "legs straight out," and the guy just clearly didn't seem to get it. He didn't. He said, "All right, you're going to get tased." You see him reach in and take out the taser like he was like ready. So that meant the next time you don't obey me, which came about with the confusing order from the female officer. He went ahead and tased him. It's ridiculous. Those guys aren't fit to be cops. They should be fired. They don't go to jail, but they got no business having guns. That was confusing. I had no idea that they meant stick out your legs and cross them. I mean, I none of us are now. experts at being right. listening to the cops when we're under arrest for having a bat that we didn't have. It, and what they said in here is that they were using the, the taser as a preventative measure. Yeah, that's so too much. Let me give you the uh, statement from the Lancaster PD from Pennsylvania. Uh, the statement that they gave to the press was, this is done as a measure of control to ensure that if someone is going to flee or offer physical resistance, they will have to move their legs under yeah, them to right. do so. Non-compliance is often a precursor to someone that is preparing to flee or fight with officers. Okay, that's, uh, so I'm correct. I hadn't even read that yet. But so if your legs are out like this, you gotta go like this first to get up. If your legs are like this, you can just spring straight up, and that's what they're trying to avoid. So make that effing clear before you use your taser. Yeah, okay, so I, I have a harsh review of this. Uh, and you guys have been harsh, but not enough in my opinion. So the cops, uh, now we've seen this in a lot of tapes, play Simon Says with these guys, and they're toying with people's lives. Uh, and how the hell is he supposed to know? I, I assume cross your legs meant when she said it, Cross your legs like this, like when you in that like in bed position or that he was in, right? Uh, so they can't wait to use the taser. 
it would appear that, I don't right. know about they, we have this evidence. This, we guy, have, I, this guy seemed eager to use the taser. I, and, and look, you could say, look, there's hundreds of thousands of cops across the country. And so the dozens and dozens and dozens, maybe hundreds of videos we've seen where the cops can't wait to use their weapons is an anomaly, but and most of them don't. But then all the other cops defend them. So, uh, but I, like Anna said, I was terrified they were gonna murder him. Because it reminded me of the story from Mesa, Arizona of the guy crawling in the hallway of the hotel room. Mm -hmm. And they keep giving him confusing instructions and he's in a panic and he's trying to comply. And it's super obvious he's trying to comply. In that case, it was a white guy. And then he just murdered him uh, he, you know, for following. And he was sobbing. He yeah, was the guy's sobbing, knees, sobbing, clearly not a threat, no, nowhere near a threat. And the guy shot him and killed him, right? And of course, got away with it. Oh, they're just bad apples. If they're bad apples, why aren't they in prison, right? No, because you protect them, because you and you encourage them to use too much violence. And that's the problem with the yeah. training that I keep talking about. In this case, anybody watching that video, if you're an honest person, if you're a douche right winger, you're like, I <laughs> got him. <laughs> I get it. I get it. You're irredeemable, right? But if you're an honest person, did he seem like a threat to you? Really? Like. Did it appear that he was trying to not listen to the cops or listen to the cops? Anybody looking at that tape looks like he's like, okay, I'm I'm trying to extend my legs. And then she says, cross them. He goes to try to cross them, and he tasers her. He tases him anyway. Also, if that's not a threat. It's not a threat. And by the way, this preventative measure, that's that's another quote, the one that Kim referenced that the cops used. That means hey, we I'm going I'm going to assault you before you do anything. I'm going to prevent you doing something. That you didn't yet do, and I'm going to tase you think before you do it. I think implicit in it also, you're right, is also I didn't shoot you. It's prevented. I prevented myself from shooting you. Yeah, well, I congratulations. You. I didn't murder you. Uh, you know, look, nobody would be seeing this video if that cop had acted like an ass and told him to, or even kicked his leg forward. Right? We wouldn't be doing this story. Like, mm -hmm. it kicked out the heel of the leg, spread it out, use the phrase knees straight. Mm -hmm. That's it. That would have done it, right? That's really what you wanted, but you didn't have the skills to do it. So, yeah, of course this guy was eager to, and of course those directions were confusing. That seems blatantly obvious that this guy wasn't a threat. And it's, by the way, uh, then the other thing that is, I think, always relevant here is, okay, I suppose the attitude that the cop is going to portray, that the cop is going to say, and what the department seems to be backing up, is that he wasn't totally in it. He was being like, Fine, you're gonna make me sit down now, and now you're gonna make me sit here and spread my legs. I don't quite know what you mean. Mm -hmm. He was not yes sirring it to the utmost extent, right? He was not a 150% complier. He was at 84%, and he was pissed, right? Doesn't matter. He's not a threat. So you don't get to win this. Your win is he did what you said. You make sure he's not violent. You, if you're going to arrest him, you cuff him, you put him in the car, and you take him to the station, and the process begins. And that's it. You don't get to tase somebody because they pissed you off. So there was a story that I believe we, I believe it made it to the show. Maybe we didn't get to it because we ran out of time. But there was a story about uh, a woman in North Carolina who got arrested at a public at a public pool because uh, she was harassing two boys, black boys, that uh, she didn't want there. She kept telling them, "You don't belong here." And so they're kids. They're two black boys. One of them starts filming as she's forcing them out, like following them to the exit, and she assaults them. On three different occasions, you see the phone fall to the ground, right? And I guess at one point, she strikes one of the kids in the face, and cops are called. When the cops showed up, she started physically assaulting the cops, apparently bit one of the cops in the ear, and the cops, you know, arrest her. She, she gets uh, her mugshot taken and everything. I want everyone to be treated that way. The, that way, right. right? I get it. She was incredibly combative, she was incredibly difficult to deal with. But I would not want anyone to pull a gun on her. I would not want anyone to use excessive force on her. Arrest her, book her, let the justice system deal with her. Jared Ramos didn't get tased. He was under the desk with a gun. Yeah, that's the guy who did the shooting at, 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 in Baltimore just now. Look, uh, now let me be less harsh. It's not the particular cop, and, and a lot of people disagree with me when I say that. But they trained them to uh, be overwhelming force, don't yeah, take any right. risks. Um, well, if you're in a shootout like in the movie Heat with a bunch of bank robbers with automatic weapons, then you use overwhelming force. 
But if a guy is sitting down and trying to comply with the orders, don't use overwhelming force. But what do they train him to do? Unless it's a rich white woman, make sure that you beat the crap out of him or tase him or shoot him. Don't take any chances because your life is more important than their life. And also, and, and they're protected. You know, I mean, this needs to be a, a, again, as always, a change in the law because we. The, the issue isn't so much that DAs won't prosecute, because we see what happens frequently when DAs prosecute, they get acquitted. Because mm -hmm. the laws are written in such a way where if you go, my life was threatened. And the law says if the cop feels like his life was threatened, well then, then lethal force is okay. So if that law is changed to where that is no longer the only defense, well then, We'd have a different set of circumstances, and I am, you know, probably. May, I don't know whether I'm different than anybody else on this panel. I, I, I am enormously sympathetic to police officers in general. It is an unbelievably stressful and difficult job, and it's why they ought to get paid more and they ought to get trained better. Yeah. And and as a result, when good cops, of which there are many, see this, to Jenk's point earlier, they ought to say, that guy's a bad police officer, and that guy makes my job harder. Instead, what do they do? And so. This injustice to this guy has already happened, okay? Uh, but the injustice continues. They arrested him. What? Oh, because they went to go investigate the guy swinging the bat and hitting people. That's a really serious crime. So I'm glad. Oh no, they didn't arrest him on that because there was no bat. They arrested him for public drunkenness. You know what that is? Cover my ass. I I tased him. He was the wrong guy and he wasn't doing anything wrong. But I'll add insult to injury. Uh, literally in this case. By arresting him for public drunkenness so that I'm not embarrassed. By the way, that to me makes it worse. If this guy is drunk yeah. and you know he's drunk, well then he's gonna have a difficult time following your commands. Yeah. And it also means he's less likely to be a threat to me. And yeah. let me ask you guys, no matter who you are, again, sometimes I talk to the right wing because they, I don't know if anything ever gets through their head, but have you ever been drunk in public? I have, um, my guess is all of you have, right? Jack's drunk right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and seriously, when you're going to bars, you're going to clubs, etc., you've been drunk in public. You think it's okay for a cop to go, okay, Simon says this, Simon says that, you didn't follow a tase, 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 right? No, and then you think that they charged him because they were really concerned right. afterwards that he was intoxicated? No. You know it, everybody knows it. They did it to cover their ass. Yeah, what's a bigger crime here, tasing that guy or being drunk in public? Come on. I mean, a lot of people, unfortunately, in the country would say being drunk in public. Well, yeah, here's while the knowing right. full well that they themselves have been drunk in public numerous times. And, yeah. and that's, the, that's the unfortunate thing. It's, it's the lack of empathy, the, the lack of understanding. And, and I just wish people would put themselves in that person's shoes and understand what it's like to go through something like that and, and not know clearly what the cops want you to do and then be met with that kind of you know, physical force. Pay them more, train them better. It's a frustrating story. I feel like I could, I could use a shot of a, of a little dog trying to give CPR to a Me person. Me too, do we have a video <laughs> of a dog? That would help, I just, and that's a random thing to ask for. But in this, uh, there in this you guys of, go again with the dogs. In this type of situation. <laughs> Poncho. He's not that good. That'll never work. He's not that good. I feel like Jake and I are cat people. <laughs> no, Jake's a cat person. I'm a person person. I'm a well known Literally. humanist. I have okay. a picture in my phone of you holding a kitten like a baby. Okay. Just, so little, just every once there. in a while, I try <laughs> to hide that side. Before he dropped it off at the shelter. Okay. Oh. Two easy ways to follow the Young Turks. One is hit the subscribe button down below. Uh, then you're a TYT subscriber. And second is ring the bell. And when you do that on YouTube, you're notified of our videos.